Yeah, I am going to talk tonight about impartation. This is part two to what happened last night. Um, so if you weren't here last night, never fear. I'm going to fly through it at a million miles an hour, um, kind of get you caught up to what Curtis talked about yesterday. Oh, and I got, oh, you gave me all kinds of time. Oh, I'm excited. Okay, so we're going to dive right in to impartation, and I'm going to pray first. Oh. Everybody take a deep breath. And out. The Holy Spirit, we just invite you to speak. We invite the spirit of peace to come. Lord, I ask that you just fill, fill my heart and fill my mouth with what you want to say tonight. We just love you, God, and we love all the things that you have for us. We're excited to jump into the gifts that you have for us. Thanks, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, impartation. Do we have it? He has it. It's okay. I mean, it's okay. Yay! See, I have my PowerPoint. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> But what you don't know is I finished it like 10 minutes before 7 o'clock. <laughs> so it was exciting. <laughs> um, so last night, Curtis talked about um, Ephesians 1 through 4. He talked about the fivefold gifts. And basically, so the fivefold gifts happen in Ephesians 4. That's where Paul writes about them. Curtis gave us a context for them. So usually we just kind of pull them out. And we say, these are the fivefold giftings, and they're used for the building up of the body. And we don't really look at, okay, Paul, why were you even talking about that? Like, where did that come from? So he went back to Ephesians 1, took us all the way through it at a million miles an hour. It was awesome. Um, it was seriously so good. And so basically what we learned was the context of that, if we go back to Ephesians 1, Paul's talking about the whole point of this whole thing is to become more like Christ, right? Salvation is... A step in the door. We are in the doorway, in the house of God when you're saved. But there's a whole house. There's a whole lot more to do. And becoming more like Christ is the whole point. And basically, Christ gives us gifts, gives us spiritual gifts, revelation, wisdom, understanding, all kinds of stuff, to get us to be more like Christ. So you don't get the gifts because you're like Christ. You get them in order to become like him. Um, now Christ, Jesus, is not at all confused about who he is, right? So if we're becoming more like Jesus, if I'm becoming more like Jesus and Curtis is becoming more like Jesus, then Curtis and I should be coming sort of to a place of sameness. Does that make sense? If we're both becoming like the same person, we should be coming towards unity. And that's what Paul talks about in Ephesians 1 and 2. He's saying, if, you're, if we're all becoming more like Christ, we're all becoming unified as a church. That's the goal. And then he gets to the fivefold passage. So go to the next slide, Ephesians 4. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for the works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. A lot of times we stop there. That's the end of verse 12. But I think the next verse is actually more important. He gives us the gifts to equip his people for the works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ, until we become like Christ. That's the whole point. He gives us a fivefold to build up the body so that the body may become more like Christ. And then I jump to verse 16 because I love it so much. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. So the purpose of the fivefold is not just to build up the body of Christ and to equip them. The purpose is to get them into unity and to be more like Christ. That's the purpose of the fivefold. Following? That's what it says. I didn't make it up. <laughs> right? <laughs> So, let me figure out how to, ooh. the purpose is unity of the body. Christ gave us the fivefold 
he can't give us anything that he is not, right? You can't give away something you don't have. I can't give you a 40-inch TV if I don't have one. Christ can't give you apostleship if, if he didn't have that to give you. The cool thing about this is Jesus was all five. He was apostle. He was prophet. He was pastor, shepherd. He was evangelist. And he was teacher. He was all five. If we're becoming more like Christ, why should we just have one? We should also be looking like all five. Does that make sense? So, Christ gave us the fivefold. He is all five. Go ahead to the next slide. He operated in all five. So as we as a body become more like him, we should also be operating in all five, and then we all start to look like one another and become in unity. The most important point of this passage is what Paul is implying is that all of them are available to all of us. It's available to you. He's implying that the fivefold is, is, is I'm going to say, temporary. And this is where Curtis kind of hit home last night. The fivefold, we see it as like a top of a pyramid. These are the five, and they're leading us, and then here's all the lay people <laughs> that don't have giftings. They're all down here. As the body of Christ grows, take the Apostle Paul. How many people do you think he discipled? We know he discipled at least Timothy. We know that. But I think to say he didn't disciple anybody else is outrageous. Let's say even for sake of illustration, he discipled three guys. Let's say he took three, and I think that's a radical underestimation. Let's say he discipled three, and they all became apostles after him. He raised them up in the gifting that he had. He gave them what he had. He imparted to them apostleship, and they came up after him. And they became apostles. Now let's say those three guys each discipled three guys and imparted to them their gift of apostleship. Now there are nine apostles. So see, as, we, as, as the early church started, there were probably very few people with fivefold giftings, very few leaders. But as we progress and as people impart to the ones below them, more and more and more and more and more people should be popping up with giftings because they're receiving from those above them. And that, in that way, the fivefold stops being a pyramid and levels out, and we're all walking in the gifts. Does that make sense? Multiplication by impartation. That's how it works. So all the gifts are available to you. I'm going to hit that home with a couple scriptures really quick. God is no respecter of persons, right? He doesn't say, this person is special and this person is not. This person gets gifts and this person doesn't, right? He gives us all a measure of giftings, and yes, he gives us all different stuff, but it's not, it has nothing to do with you're special and you're not. Everything is available to you. Everything is available to you. And the other scripture I want to bring up is in Revelation. It says that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony, so the story, something that happened, is the spirit of prophecy. It'll happen again. If he did it for someone else, he'll do it for you. They're all available to you. Go ahead and do the next slide. I like this one. It's an Old Testament visitation mindset that says the gifts and anointings of God stay with the man of God and are not available to the lay people. That's an Old Testament mindset. That's Moses go up on the mountain and we all stay here and don't hear from God. Right? That's the priests go into the Holy of Holies because we're not allowed to go and we stay out here and they do everything for us. Old Testament visitation mindset. God, I say visitation because God didn't exist within people. He happened to places. Right? God was in a place. In a, in a what's the word? Geographical location. It's a New Testament habitation mindset, God lives in me, that says, I have the same Holy Spirit as that guy, so everything that that guy has, I also can have. I can have anything that I see somebody else have in the Lord. Cool? Yay. I'm just trying to convince you, everything is available to you, because I'm going to now tell you how to get it. <laughs> so it's going to be exciting. 
Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm going to tell a story. Sorry. <laughs> I'm a little all over the place. We follow a prophet uh, named Sean Bowles, who we just love. Anybody know Sean Bowles? He's incredible. A few people? Awesome. Moves in words of knowledge like you wouldn't believe. Gets people's bank account numbers from the stage. It's, it's absurd. Um, he uh, told a story in a message we listened to a couple weeks ago. Um, he was, when he was young, he had a very loving family. He has a sister. Um, and his dad took his sister out for a day, you know, daddy-daughter day. And when he came back, they had shopping bags, and they had toys, and they had all kinds of stuff. And Sean, knowing how loved he was, didn't get jealous. He said, Dad, I just want to see all the receipts of everything that you got my sister. And his dad was like, why do you want to see the receipts? He said, because everything that, all the money that you spent on her, you're going to spend the same amount on me next time we go out. And God works the exact same way. So when you see somebody moving in something, it's not, oh, I wish I had that. It's, God, show me the receipt. Because you're going to do that for me next. I'm next. Let's do it. So, next slide, please. Impartation. So, we talked about impartation a little bit. Everything's available through, to you. The way you get it is through impartation. Impartation, I wrote down, is the transference of spiritual gifts or graces from one person to another. Spiritual gifts, so we talked about the fivefold. That's not the only thing that's available through impartation. The fivefold is just a list of gifts. Um, there's also the gifts of the Spirit. There's also the gifts of God the Father listed in Romans 12. There's also tons and tons and tons of spiritual gifts that are not listed in the Bible. Um, so don't let that freak you out. There are spiritual gifts that are not listed in the Bible. I heard a story um, of a girl that when she got baptized in the Holy Spirit, she was able to write in perfect Chinese. Incredible. It's not, and you might say, it's not on the list. It's not one of the nine. It doesn't count. But it's consistent with the list, right? Same Holy Spirit. Seems, seems like it could fit, you know? There's all kinds of stuff like that that God wants to give to us. Um, I said spiritual gifts, and I said spiritual graces. A grace is not necessarily a gift, but maybe a, maybe a specific, you might call it an anointing. You might call it something that somebody's... Um, specifically blessed with a grace you might have a grace for entrepreneurship and business and stewarding wealth that can be imparted you might have a grace for a certain people group like paul had a grace for the gentiles that was the grace on his life was to minister to the gentiles it wasn't for the jews <laughs> he didn't do well <laughs> but he definitely had a grace for the gentiles and he was able to impart that's something that he could impart to people that came after him um <laughs> so Ways we get impartation. The first way here is probably the most obvious. This is what we think of as charismatics when we think of impartation. Somebody came and lays hands on you, and you receive whatever gifting they're praying for you for, right? Important to understand that they can't give away something they don't have. You can't go up to somebody who doesn't heal people and <laughs> say, will you pray for me to receive the gift of healing? They can't give you a gift of healing. They don't have it important to understand that. Um, they can pray that God will give it to you, but they can't give it to you. Um, so laying on of hands, there, it's as, as much as we think of that as the most like normal way that we get impartation, it's actually talked about in the Bible very little. There are very few examples of somebody laying hands on somebody else and them walking in the, in the gifting. Um, really the only one that has any kind of obviousness is um, 1 Timothy 4.14. I didn't write it down, or, or did I? No, I don't think I did. It's very short. Um, Paul's writing to Timothy, and he says, Do not neglect your gift, which was given to you through prophecy, when the body of elders laid their hands on you. So Timothy received some kind of gift in some kind of prayer session. Um, and we don't really know what it was, but he received a spiritual gift. That word is charisma, spiritual gift. Um, so, well, yeah. So as much as we talk about that, like I said, 
it probably happened in the Bible a lot more. It happened in that time a lot more than was written about, but we don't see it very much. There aren't a lot of examples of it. Um, and as far as things like that, instantaneous impartation, I'm going to talk about that tonight, but not a whole lot, because I don't think it's the most important way that we get impartation. And I don't think it's the most common way. And I don't think even sometimes, I don't think it's sometimes the way God prefers to impart things. So we're going to get there. Let's jump to the second way. So go ahead, next slide. The second way we receive impartation is by coming under authority and receiving it through inheritance. This, I believe, is the most important way we get impartation. I think this is the most common way. And in the Bible, that is pretty consistent. The most obvious example of this is Elijah and Elisha. Um, I want you to think, when we, when we talk about authority and inheritance, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. I want you to think of like father-son relationships, mentor-mentee relationships, teacher-student relationships. The people that are above you are the people that you receive impartation from the most. Make sense? for the most part. So let's jump to Elijah and Elisha. 2 Kings 2 is where I'm going, and it's all up there, so if you don't want to pull it up, and if you can read tiny words, we're going to go through it. So this is um, just before Elijah is about to get taken up in the whirlwind, and Elisha has been following him around for a very long time, I skipped the very long narrative of Elisha following him around and jumped to the end. Um, <laughs> so, the company of the prophets at Jericho went up to Elisha and asked him, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, he replied, so be quiet. That's a really nice way of translating that. There's some really funny translations of that if you've ever looked it up in other, um, other versions. <laughs> um, then Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here. The Lord has sent me to the Jordan. And he, Elisha, replied, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Fifty men from the company of the prophets went and stood at a distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stopped at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what can I do for you before I am taken from you? Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. Give me an impartation. I want what you have. I want it two times. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said. Yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours. Otherwise, it will not. As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly... A chariot of fire and, of, and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up into heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and the horsemen of Israel. And Elisha saw him no more. Then he took hold of his garment and tore it in two. Elisha then picked up Elijah's cloak that had fallen from him. Important. And went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He took the cloak that had fallen from Elijah and struck the water with it. Where now is the Lord, the God of Elijah, he asked. And when he struck the water, it divided to the right and to the left, and he crossed over. There's so much in this about inheritance and authority and what we can gain from walking under someone and watching them. Because, well, a few things. Something that the Lord showed me about this passage today that I didn't notice, and I've read this many times. Fifty men from the company of the prophets stood at a distance and watched the whole thing happen. But guess who didn't receive a double portion? Them. There's something about watching close enough. There's something about being close. If you're not at a close enough distance with the person you're walking under, you may not receive from them. A lot of us would consider ourselves under Pastor Randy, but how close are you really? Is an hour a week close? Think about that. I'm not saying that Pastor Randy, you need to follow him around everywhere he goes, but I am saying that we think, we think of that as I'm, un, I'm under him. I'm, I'm under his authority. Absolutely. 
but what am I really going to receive unless I'm close enough? So that was one that like, woo, hit me today. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water. Notice that he did not turn to Elisha and say, this is how you part the water with the Lord. That's not what he said. (laughs) He did it, and he walked. And Elisha noticed. He saw what he did, and he he replicated it. He learned by example. He learned by following. Obviously, the two had a pretty close relationship because when he went up, he said, my father, my father, lowercase f. He was referring to Elijah, not God. My father. He, He was a father figure to him. There's a closeness in that relationship. Um... And then, yeah, the other thing is he saw him as he went up. And that's, a, I think, also that's about being close, but it's also about you have to see something in order to, to obtain it. Um, and I'm going to come back to that. So authority and inheritance is the second way we receive impartation. And like I said, I think it's actually the most common, and it's actually the most important. It's the one that's the closest to the father's heart. He's a father. He loves to work through family. He loves to work through father-son relationships. That's the way that he operates. The third way we receive impartation, proximity and relationship. So if you think of authority and inheritance as a vertical relationship, a father-son relationship, proximity is this way, horizontal. I receive from siblings and friends. Maybe not as potently as I receive from somebody above me, but I do receive from them. I receive impartation from those around me. Um, There aren't a lot of really solid examples of this in the Bible. Um, There's a couple of Proverbs. Go ahead to the next slide. And this is something that we talk about quite a bit. Um, I don't know if we realize we're talking about it. Proverbs 13.20, walk with the wise and become wise but the companion of fools suffers harm. Makes sense, right? Choose your friends. <laughs> Proverbs 22, 24, 24 and 25. Do not make friends with a hot-tempered person. Do not associate with one easily angered, or you may learn their ways and get yourself ensnared. We talk about this a lot in a negative context, right? We say, oh, be careful who you hang out with. Be careful what you're feeding yourself. But it's also true in a positive context. Who are you surrounding yourself with? Do they have things that you want imparted to you? I'm going to come back to this, too. There's so much. Um, But this God showed me as we were reading Acts, actually. I read it, and I was like, oh, my gosh. It's impartation on a horizontal level. And I got very excited. Um, The selection of Matthias. So there were 12 apostles, right? And then Judas had a problem. Now he's gone. He's not one of the 12 anymore. Um, and they needed to select one more to fill, to fill his role. It is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus was living among us, beginning from John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken up from us. For one of these must become a witness with us of the resurrection. So they nominated two men, Joseph called Barsabbas, also known as Justice. I like how he had a title, but Matthias didn't. <laughs> and Matthias... <laughs> Then they prayed, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two you have chosen to take over the apostolic ministry, which Judas left to go where he belongs. Then they cast lots, and the lot fell to Matthias, so he was added to the 11 apostles. So Matthias was with them the whole time. He was a bro. He was, he was with them. He just wasn't one of the 12. So I think of this so much as, as a... As a, as a horizontal relationship, a friendship. And they needed, they, there was a leadership role that they needed filled. So they imparted apostleship to Matthias horizontally. Make sense? So totally, totally, totally possible. possible. Um, like, a, a, po- a possible is what I said. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, the fourth, <laughs> yeah. The fourth and final way that we receive impartation, and this I just added. I don't have a scripture for it, but, man, it's everywhere. Through language and teaching. What are we reading? What are we watching? 
Um, Curtis talked about this yesterday that Paul says in the beginning of the book of Romans, I wish that I could come to you so I could impart a spiritual gift to you. That's laying on of hands. That's the first one. He wishes he could do that. But I can't. So I'm going to write the book of Romans, which does almost the same thing. Have you ever read something and you're like, wow, that wasn't just head knowledge. There was something on that. And you received it when you read it. Totally a thing. And, and, and the Bible supports that up and down, right and left, all over the place. When you read things, when you receive things through language, through teaching, that, 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 you can be, that things can be imparted, gifts can be imparted, freedom can be imparted, authority can be imparted through language. So, all right. All that in mind, go ahead to the next slide. The question I have for you is, oh, that's the one. So what do you want? These are all the ways we receive spiritual gifts. These are all the ways that we can get imparted to. My question for you is, what do you want imparted to you? There are so many things available. Like I said, not just the five full gifts. Any spiritual gift. Any grace that you feel called to. What do you want? What do you feel the Lord has led you to? What do you want to grow in? The second phrase, you cannot become what you haven't seen or heard. We listen to a guy named Chris Valentin a lot, and he says this all the time. I wish it was a Bible verse, but it's not. <laughs> I always think it is, and I always look it up, and I'm always like, it's, it's not in the Bible. <laughs> um, it's not not in the Bible, but the implication, you, you cannot become what you haven't seen or heard. Um, you cannot become something unless it's been modeled for you. That's the... That's the idea behind it. Um, unless it's been beheld before your eyes, it's very difficult to become something that you can't see, imagine. Like, it's not there for you. Um, statistically, the five people that you listen to the most are shaping your worldview and perspective. Think about that. Think about even just time you spend listening to certain people. Number one is probably your spouse, if you're married. That's probably the person you converse with the most that speaks into your life the most. But who else? Teachers, work people, pastors maybe. But like I said, if we listen to Randy one hour a week, he's probably not the person that we're listening to the most as much as we wish that were true. Who are you under and who are you around? Who is feeding you? Like I said, we hear this in the negative a lot, but I'm saying it now in the positive. Who do you want to be feeding you? Who you surround yourself with, the things you feed yourself, all those giftings, anointings can belong to you if you seek them. A few things to remember about impartation as we go forward. Now you can go to that next slide. So, you have to get under and around people. Real, live, actual people. Honor the giftings in other people. If you see somebody with a gifting, honor that thing. Hey, I see that God's using you in this way. That's awesome. Can you teach me? One of the things that Curtis and I were, like, completely shocked at, and, and I don't mean this as a negative toward anybody, um, we started moving a lot in, in healing. We, we move a lot in healing, and we move a lot in, in the prophetic. Um, those are kind of our two areas that we've been kind of stirred up in the last couple of years. Um, and during Fire and Glory, we started seeing a lot of healings, the two of us, and specifically Curtis. And there was one night Curtis came home and he said, you know what shocks me? A lot of people have said, wow, it's so amazing how many, how many people God's healed through you and it's so awesome how God's moving. And, but nobody has said, pray for me that I can do it too. 
teach me. What are you doing that's different? Because remember, in Ephesians 4, everything is available to us. I love Curtis, but there's nothing special about his ability to pray for healing. There isn't. He's, he's worked his faith. He's learned. He's learned how to build his faith up. And he can teach that to people. It didn't just strike him from heaven one day, you know? I might come back to that. But <laughs> So, yeah, when you see something, it's available to you. But you have to go ask for it. You have to get around people. You have to get under or around people. One of the scariest things I hear sometimes is I, I, just, I just get what I need from the Lord. I just get fed directly from the Holy Spirit. Like I said before, the kingdom of God moves through family. It moves through people. He doesn't just zap people with double portions because he feels like it. <laughs> you usually have to get it from somebody else. He loves to work through relationship. Things are inherited through impartations and relationships. If you're not receiving impartation through some relationships in your life, not all, maybe not all of them, but if you're not receiving impartation from at least a couple, you may be out of the will of God for your life. I say that so kindly. <laughs> But it just, it, it may be a thing of, God, who do you want me to get under right now? How do you want me to be growing? Who do you want me to learn from? Because we never stop learning, like Pastor Randy said just, just here a minute ago. We never stop. And, and when I see people who say, I just received from the Holy Spirit, I'm not under anybody, a lot of times I see somebody that has stopped growing and has become ineffective in that place. Always get under people. Always honor the gifts in one another and seek each other out. You can do this and I can't. Will you teach me? Always, always, always being a student. It takes time and effort and commitment. Sometimes. <laughs> we don't get zapped with stuff, even though we want to. <laughs> sometimes we have to go through a process. And, and, and sometimes you sit under somebody for a year or two and you learn how they do what they do and, and, and you receive impartation from something that, a gifting that they have with the Lord. It's, in, it's about you feeding yourself and not expecting others to spoon feed you. We have to seek people out sometimes. Like I said, come and ask people. When Curtis and I hear a prophetic person that moves in the prophetic with a higher grace than we do, we are always like, please pray for us. Like we, we are like up at the front. We're like, we want to receive or do you have any books or, you know, how can we, do you have any more teachings? Like, we're just hungry for it. One of my very favorite things, and I'm going to, I might embarrass her, but last night, Curtis did this awesome teaching on impartation, right? And then Miss Stacy, who I love so much, she comes up to the front and she stands right here and she stands in front of Pastor Randy and she says, so it, impart to me. Like, and I was like, yes, like, that's the point. Like, we can all go, oh, that's not, yeah, God, I pray that you impart things. No, like, you have to go. You have to take a step. You have to pursue somebody who's walking in something that you're not. And that's scary sometimes. We have not because we ask not. And I don't mean that just from God. Because here's what I've noticed more often than not God does in my life. I say, God, I really want to move in compassion more. For example, I really, God, I really want to move in compassion where I feel like that's where you're calling me to grow. Lord, will you teach me? And then God puts in front of me a wonderful, compassionate young woman to be my friend. And what do I do? I get envious of her. When God puts her in front of me to teach me to be compassionate. How, does anybody relate to that situation? Yeah? God, I've been praying for, you know, I've been feeling like I'm going to have a healing ministry. Who are you pursuing that has a healing ministry to learn from them? I've been feeling like I'm going to go into missions. Who are you pursuing that has an evangelistic anointing on their life? Who are you getting under? Get under people. Come up to them. So when you seek impartation, I want you to, well, this, blah. I'm going to wrap up. Yeah, I'm wrapping up. Um, <laughs> So seeking impartation, we want to seek it in all four ways. So remember, laying on of hands, pray for me. 
Pray for me. I want what you have. Two, discipleship, a father-son relationship. May not always be possible. We can't get it from some of the people that we totally love and follow, like the people out at Bethel. We, they can't disciple us. Not possible. Um, but if it is possible, pursue it. Find someone. Get discipled. So good. Um, proximity, friendships. Share with each other. Hey, I noticed you're really good at this. Can you teach me? Also, I'm really good at this. Can I teach you? Friendships. And then four, language and teaching. If you can't get under somebody, hey, do you have any books I can read? Do you have any teachings I can watch? Do you have any other way I can come under you other than, you know, following you everywhere? <laughs> Who do you want to receive from? Ask them. That's the point. <laughs> Go ahead to the next slide. This is the thought that I want to leave you with, so I'm in closing. Equally as important as everything I just said, going and getting impartation, seeking it for yourself, doing the legwork, going after people, ask the Lord or think to yourself, what do I carry that I can impart to others? And who do I see that might need that? I heard somebody say this just on, on Thursday this week, and it like blew up in my mind. Revival does not last without constant impartation. If Paul doesn't duplicate himself, revival doesn't last. He's just Paul, and then he dies an apostle, and there are no apostles after him to continue the movement. Your gifting could die with you. Without impartation, revival doesn't, it's not sustainable. We have to constantly be passing ourselves on. Actually, the word for impartation that Paul uses in Romans is found in another verse in 1 Thessalonians, I think, where it says, I gave of myself. We have to be duplicating ourselves in order for revival to last. If not, it's built on one individual's anointing instead of a culture that was created. Impartation is not just laying on of hands. It happens through family and investment and teaching and language. So I invite you to stand. And just hold out your hands for me. I just want to pray for you really fast in closing. Hmm. So, Holy Spirit, what do you want to give us? And, Lord, we know, we know that you can give us anything you want to at any time. We know that we can have amazing individual experiences with God where God imparts things to us. And I do not discredit that, Lord. I give you that sovereignty. I just worship you for it. But God, we ask, what do you want to give us through relationships? Would you open our eyes to see and honor and get under the people around us? That's what the Lord said to me today as I said, so God, what's your point? What do you want to say? And he said, tell them to honor the gifts, and the, the gifts that they see in others and get under them. So Lord, just help us. Help us to honor each other. Help us to see what we can learn from one another and grow and all of this to become more like Christ. All of it to become more like Christ. Every gift we receive is to grow our hearts to be more like him. So Lord, we just open up ourselves to that. We open up ourselves to be imparted to by whoever you would send our way. And we're excited to learn and to grow with you. In Jesus' name.